Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, this is another IoT developer event. Um, today, I will be the host and the speaker again. Um, the topic is data integration with Comolocity IoT. This is a topic I covered a few months ago, where I, where I was asked um, to highlight the many and possible options we have how to integrate data to Comolocity IoT. And I came up with an article, um, and this article is very theoretical, a lot of um, assumptions. Um, and I thought it would be a good idea to also highlight this in the event and also have a discussion with you, of course. And I'm very open um, for additional options or experience you have collected. Um, as always, this event is recorded. Um, the recording will be uploaded to the YouTube channel and the IoT, de IoT developer playlist. Afterwards, I will also share the slides after this meeting. Um, the microphones are muted so far, but we will definitely have time today to have a Q&A. Um, if you have in the meantime any kind of question to a specific slide, please use the chat, write it in the chat, and in the Q&A, I will read them and then try to answer them. Okay. So let's get started. So the agenda for today are actually four, four things I want to cover. First of all, the motivation, why I came up with this topic, why I spent some time digging into the data integration options. Um, second one, um, why it's important to, to understand what options are there, what's the power of it. Um, the third option, and this is the main block of the today session, um, to explain seven data integration options I have discovered um, in detail and how uh, are they different from, uh, from each other and when to use which and what are benefits and not benefits of using each option. And in the end, of course, a summary and the Q&A. So let's start with motivation. Um, when implementing IoT solutions and using Comolocity IoT, um, you're mainly focusing on IoT device data first. Yeah, so the main thing and the first stop in an early project um, you might have done in the past is integrating your devices. Um, device data are delivering um, just um, data um, which you can use um, to do some basic use cases like device management. For example, some um, metrics data of a gateway, some software version of, uh, of some devices, firmware software management, uh, configuration management. This is all collected in the device man management area. You can also think about basic condition monitoring. Um, for example, um, having uh, a device and you want to um, monitor the device condition, like is it healthy, is it not healthy, is it compromised, is it not compromised, uh, is there something wrong with the device? This is, I, I would explain as a, a basic device condition monitoring. But the only use case you can implement with, uh, with the device data only. The real IoT solutions, um, the device data only is not sufficient. So what you actually need is, you need some context. And the context very often is not in Comolocity IoT out of the box because we have the devices integrated, we have mainly device data. The context data mainly relies on, on other systems. Uh, maybe it's not in a system, maybe it's in some Excel sheets, maybe in some heads of some people, but very often it's also in some other systems. And here we're talking about um, data integration. Um, so additional data to the device data needs to be integrated to implement your IoT solution. And this context data, um, this is what, your, what makes your IoT solution unique. To give you some example, um, if you're talking about some uh, wind park management, yeah, then of course we have some meterings, hardware um, in, in the parks, but you are very interested in your wind park. So this is something which is mainly not uh, coming from any devices, but is, which is uh, in another system where you have uh, maybe not only a wind park, but other structures, maybe a building um, um, and all this kind of assets and data, maybe relying in another system, 
and needs to be integrated to have your unique IoT solution. And both of this data, the device data and the context data needs to be combined to have a unique IoT solution. And then almost every, I would say, not starting solution, IoT solution, um, this is the case. So what's the power of the I IoT data? As I said, you want to build an IoT solution in the end most often. So we have different kinds of data. First of all, we have the device data, I already mentioned that, but we have um, the live device data. I call it live device data because this is real-time data coming from the device, like sensor data, temperature values, humidity values, maybe energy meterings coming uh, from the wind park. This is, uh, from, for me, I call it live device data coming directly to a solution and you want to do something about it. Then we have long time or historical device data, um, which were in the past, um, maybe a, a week ago, a day ago, or even a month ago. And you also want to have that, that you don't only see the current status um, of your device, but you also want to may see um, how was the status last day or last week or last month. And therefore, we also need to persist the device data, we need long-term device data. And of course, Comolocity has a solution for that and different kind of buckets where you can um, store this kind of data. So this is fully supported, but I try to separate this kind of data because the use cases of each data is differently. So this is the device data and this data is coming from Comolocity IoT. For the um, context data, I try to separate it in three buckets. First of all, we have, of course, the master data. Master data are describing metadata like um, any kind of um, material factory or whatever, um, which is, of course, there, but it's not changed very often. And then we have transactional data, like processes um, describing um, a state from state A to state B and documenting, documenting that. And then we have some other data. And all these data are not coming out of the box in Comolocity IT. They reside in third party system or in any kind of database, as I, or as I said, sometimes also in, in, in people's sets or in Excel files or whatever. Um, and all of them needs to be integrated to an IoT solution. And this makes IoT solution powerful. This is for specific use cases uh, valuable, but this makes an IoT solution very powerful. So let's dig in on the different kind of data. For the live device that I said already, it's near real time. Um, it's, it, it is being used in real time dashboards where you want to see the current status of your devices. Uh, for long time device data, you mainly use them for data exploration, like um, what has been, what happened in the past, um, but also to detect patterns. Yeah, for example, if I correlate this data and this data of the past, can I find some kind of pattern? Um, so to correlate the data, make some analysis on the top, you can do some machine learning and train some models on, on, on long-term data, all this kind of stuff you can do with long-term or historical device data. Then we have the master data. As I said, master data, to name a few examples, are mainly um, metadata like materials, customers, suppliers, products, and so on, buildings, um, could be anything, which is describing an object or an asset. Then we have the transactional data. Transactional data, uh, in difference to the master data, um, are not describing an object, but mainly uh, um, describing the process of something, as I said, from state A to state B, like um, could be a process at all, could be a production order, can be customer orders, any kind of orders. Um, an issue that needs to be processed is also transactional data. All this kind is, I, I would say, is transactional data. And then I have the third bucket, as I said, other data. Um, and here I put anything else, like which is very often used, like environmental data. Um, what is the weather data, uh, which is relevant for some solutions? Geolocation data is sometimes very important. Any kind of other data, which is coming from a third party service. Um, this is, I call other data. Okay. Now let's talk about the seven data integration options we have with Comolocity IoT. Um, to get an overview, um, 
I collected seven and I tried them to name them a meaningful. Um, um, and I will go to each one and um, explain them. And then I will um, give you also some example use case and pro and cons of this um, integration. The first one and obvious one I already mentioned is the device integration part. We're talking about integrating devices, which is, I would say, the major part of an IoT platform also common loss of TIT. Um, I would not highlight this so much in this session because this is also very complex and you can very be detailed about the device integration, about the protocols, what kind of integrations we have, but I just want to put it on a very high level here. Um, for the device integration, Comolocity IoT has some kind of protocols like MQTT, REST Lite with M2M, OPC UR is missing, or maybe some others. Um, if you have microservices, you can also, of course, use them to integrate devices. So we have multiple options to integrate devices with Comolocity IT. Um, when you have gateways in your solution, we have Synergy IO, um, which is an, an edge software which can run on a small gateway, a Linux operated gateway. Um, and can be used to integrate your device almost out of the box. You just need to install it, um, do some mappings, um, attach your sensors, um, and then you can, you can already see the data in Comolocity IT. Um, we can also talking about direct connections with uh, bulbs or any kind of devices talking a protocol like light, the Lightbit M2M, which is using IP protocol. The main use cases, as I mentioned, you can implement with that as a mainly device management. So we are talking always only about device data here. Uh, so device management, device connectivity management is another use case you can do, and basic device condition monitoring, I already explained. These are the main use cases you can implement that. And at the beginning of your IoT journey, you might start with that, that I said, okay, I have my devices here and I want to manage them, Yeah, only the devices. But then, of course, you have some other use case. Maybe you have some other ideas behind it, and maybe you have some you need some other context, and then another data integration might be might be used or used over you. Um, this is just an architecture I, I, I um, created a few years ago, explaining all the different kinds of options you have for the device integrations. Um, I will not go through all the details. I said Synergy is a major part playing in the gateway um, um, device integration. Um, we talking about agents when integrating devices. Agents, of course, can be running on the device, implemented, embedded in a dev device. Agent can also run in Comolocity as a microservices. Agents can also run outside of Comolocity. Um, and using any IP protocol to map and transport the data to Comolocity IoT, so you can work with the device data here. This is how I want to keep it for the device integration in this session. And now let's talk about the second data integration options, which is, in my experience, a very common one and um, a lot of preferred options. Uh, as, as I've seen in the past. I called it the data contextualization. Um, I also called it sometimes data ingest or data import. Um, yeah, here's just the name data contextualization. Um, here, the, the idea is that you have the data which resides in any third party system in a database, um, which is needed in an IoT solution. And um, because of your IoT solution, is mainly communicating with Comolocity IT because this is behind a firewall or whatever. It's not reachable easy, easy in an easy way. Um, so it should only communicate with Comolocity. You might think it would be a good idea to just um, shift or replicate the data from the third party, party system and database to Comolocity IT. You can do that. The data model in Comolocity IoT is very open. Um, so you just need a client. Um, you need to decide which data needs to be stored in Comolocity, and then you use the REST API of Comolocity IT to replicate the data there. Yeah, for example, again, if you have some um, uh, master data management system, and in the master data management system, you have some materials, and you know the materials are relevant for my production process, um, and the production process should be monitored by sub-sensors and I want to have a solution, um, then maybe I want to integrate the machines in Comolocity IoT. And the way I do it is, is I, 
I select the one, I having a client, and the client is um, storing the incomolosity IoT. So I have the machines as assets here available, and I can attach the device weight data to the machines. And then in my solutions, I can navigate through the machines and see the, um, the OE or some other data um, correlated coming from the devices, for example. Um, the cons of that is um, if you replicate data, it always increases the operational cost. Yeah, of course, you have here some database or maybe some third party system you need to pay for infrastructure cost. And um, in Comolosity IoT, of course, if you if you replicate this data, you also need to pay here for the for the replicated data in the database stored in Comolosity IoT. Also, it might be very complex um, if the data is changing. Yeah, for example, if you now here you have machines and and some machines are deleted, some other machines are added, then you need to take care how to handle them in Comolosity. The easiest way is, okay, I just ignore it, and then the old one maybe at some time will be also deleted manually. Um, but sometimes you think, okay, I want to do this automatically, and then you come into the data synchronization issues that you need to find out, Ah, okay, this machine has been deleted, so maybe I need to check if it's also, also replicated in Comolosity IoT, and then I delete it there as well. So this might be sometimes very challenging. Also, if, for example, here some additional data is added, um, and so on and so on. And all this, I just described the whole process. If this is mainly done manually, it's very high maintenance effort sometimes. Yeah, that you have to, the client needs to be very intelligent. You need to maintain, maintain the client. You need to maintain the data sometimes manually. Um, you need to maintain this data. Yeah, so this is um, the cons of this, uh, this data integration option. The, the, the pro of this option is, as I said, it's most likely preferred at the beginning of a project because it's very fast and easy to implement. It's the most obvious thing you can do. I have data here. I want to work with the data in Comolosity. I just put it there and I can work with it. Yeah, so any kind of script can or job or a small uh, Python script or agent can do this um, and can synchronize data, put it to Comolosity, and you can work with that. But if you want to have that in production, of course, this sometimes is getting more and more complicated and um, this is what I try to highlight here. And there's also another option uh, which might be preferred um, if you think if you think about the same use cases uh, like asset management, master data management, harmonization, or product production data management. You can also implement the, implement that with the other data integration. I will come later on. Also, you can do this. This is totally valid options. You can do this, but most likely you should also prove prefer some other options I will show you now. So the third data integration option is the data push integration. Um, now it's the opposite. The IoT solution not only relies on Comolosity IoT, but maybe relies on a third party system. This is now the assumption that you have maybe already an IoT solution in place, um, where you have already some master data or additional data um, correlated and now Comolosity has been newly introduced to your project um, and you don't want to switch your IT solution to host it to be Comolosity IoT but still want to be um, mainly communicating with your third party system block or whatever um, but now additional device data is coming to your IT solution and how to push the data now to your to your existing solution and here we have the data push integration as I said the main use cases you can um, think about here is um, that you have some sensitive or, or near uh, real-time data, sensor data, which must be pushed um, near real-time to the system or to your dashboard or whatever. Um, and, and for that thing, you have some capabilities or three options basically in Comolosity IAT. Um, the first one is that, of course, we can if we want to stream data, it's obvious that we use Aparma Streaming Analytics, um, Analytics Builder or EPL app. Um, and here we can call, especially in the EPL app, we can call a third party endpoint. Yeah, so can, you can register on some specific type of data. You can register on that. And then you can call any kind of endpoint and forward the data to the, end, to the endpoint. 
under some conditions. Yeah, so this is more for me the the most easiest and obvious thing you can do if you want to some forward some data with and uh, um, a push mechanism to your third party system. Then we have um, um, another new functionality, pretty new functionality is already two or three years old. We call it notification API 2.0. And the notification API 2.0, um, 2.0 we have um, a message broker beyond. Um, and on the message broker, typical patterns are you can subscribe on specific message. Uh, and if you receive some messages, you can forward them to any, any protocol or to uh, any data. Um, you can implement that in the following way. You can have a microservice running in Comolosity IT doing that, yeah, subscribing on measurement data, events data, or even device data. And then if the device data is created, deleted, or updated, you can push the information to any protocol um, in a third party system with the microservice. Um, you can also think about using the notification service in an external system, um, because here we have the WebSocket connection. And if you have a, a client outside Comolosity, it can connect to the notification API, subscribe on specific topics. And then if the data received, you can natively call any internal endpoints or just store the data in the database. For example, if this is just behind a proxy or some other, we can then store the data there. So these are these three options you have. So main use cases you can implement with that is, as I said, alarming. There's an alarm occurring, something needs to be done. Uh, because we have a push mechanism here, it's um, very near, I would say, IT real time, no OT real time. Um, you can um, implement some incident management. We can forward any kind of data. We can even replicate data. Yeah, so we can say, we. Just subscribe on everything on a specific group in Comolosity um, and just replicate the data and store it in, a, in an additional database. We can also implement some data synchronization. This is also maybe a little bit of complex, but of course we can do that. Um, and we can and implement any kind, I call it high prior processes, like incident management alarming I, are also high prior processes, but um, Anything which is very important that people need to be aware of, um, this is where push is very important. Um, and you cannot wait until a job is running once a day and collecting some device data. Yeah, so, so you would maybe use the push mechanism here uh, and not the pull mechanism. The, the cons about this data integration is that um, subscribing on a specific topic always bounds um, some resources. Yeah. So if you have a client and just subscribing on everything, uh, we have a lot of queues, of course. And um, if there's a lot of traffic in the IoT platform, 100,000 of devices sending uh, multiple megabyte, terabytes, or gigabyte, gigabytes of data, um, that it might be very complex to um, to implement that and also to manage that, of course. And of course, the resources need to be bound here and the new resource needs to be bound here that you have a consumer, have been subscribed, running all the time. If the consumer is down, the messages should be queued. And if the consumer is coming up, then of course, the, all the messages which uh, the consumer missed should be forwarded to the client and they, it should be handled this kind of load. This is quite complex to implement. Uh, so you have a very error proven implementation needs to be done. And again, a lot of hardware resources, um, data resources are, are needed to, to implement that push mechanism on Comolosity side and on party system broker side. The pro side of this, I think I, I make it very clear, you have multiple options how to implement this push um, mechanism. So this is very flexible implementation. As I said, you can use Aparma, you can use a microservice, you can use notification directly with the client. And it's also very reliable, as I said, because we have the notification API. Um, if the third party system is down, or even the client is down, or the database beyond is down, still the message can be retrieved. Um, so if the notification API is, or the notification service is sending you some messages and your client is down for a couple of minutes, um, then it will be queued. And when the client is coming online again with the same subscription, 
then of course the messages which the client has been missed will be sent forward and, and this is very, very reliable um, to be implemented so you can be sure no data is missed in that uh, integration option this is also a very powerful option but only of course very useful if you have an IT solution and you want to push the data the device data to any other system now we have highlighted the push and the opposite of push is pull uh, and also of course we from comolosity perspective um, we can push the data and now it also allows that you can pull the data out of it and this is also a valid integration option um, here the, the integration looks differently from the push uh, um, integration option. Mainly if you want to pull data out of Comolosity, and again, we're talking about the device data is um, um, relying on the Comolosity IoT platform, and we have a third party system, um, and the third party system has additional data and the IoT solution um, is mainly using the data from the third party system and needs to integrate some device data. And here we now need to get the data from Comolosity and work with it. Similar to the push, but we using another approach. Um, here we have now the clients. It could be a Comolosity client and a REST client. I will explain shortly what, what the difference is. Um, because we have, a, um, uh, we have a REST API in Comolosity IoT, which is, which is pre predefined with some predefined endpoints, with some predefined um, query parameters, um, how you can fetch the data out of Comolosity. And for that, of course, I call it, you can use a Comolosity client, which is implementing that API to fetch that data on a regular basis. Uh, for example, once per day, once per hour, once per minute, depends on how often you want to um, fetch the data or on a manual basis. Um, fetch the data from the REST API and um, maybe um, store it in additional, uh, store it in your third party system so the solution can work the, with the device data. Um, this is the first option for the data pool integration that you have a Comolosity client implementing the standard REST API of Comolosity. Um, sometimes um, you cannot run any kind of um, Comolosity client because, it, of course, it's a platform um, designed API. But sometimes, especially if you have a standard, um, the standard already describes um, how the API have to look like. Um, one very good example um, I have implemented in my past is um, it's called ITSS protocol, which is a specification of a protocol for transportation and uh, transportation monitoring. Um, there are some, there are some, um, there's predefined how the endpoints should look like and the payload is predefined in the protocol. And of course, then you cannot implement um, um, with that standard. You cannot just implement the Comolosity client. You mostly need to provide the endpoints, how the specification is describing um, the, the protocol. You need to implement that and that you can use microservices. You, could, you can extend the existing, existing API of Comolosity with some custom endpoints. And then um, the any kind of REST client, also maybe a client for a specific protocol, especially in the smart metering area and the transportation area, you had a lot of, lot of standards this makes um, where this is valid. Um, then you have some default client talking this protocol, or you may have a custom client, which we have predefined in your solution and you don't want to touch, then of course you can implement your microservices and going to the custom endpoint and fetch the data out of it. And the microservice itself then of course will internally use the API of Comolosity to fetch the data, map it to the format which is specified in, uh, in the protocol or on a specification, and then um, return it back to the client. And then the client, of course, can do anything, can just stream it somewhere or put it in a database. Um, the data pool integration is useful. Um, for example, if you just want to, on request, uh, want to do some data retrieval, or if you're saying, okay, it's only, it's, for me, it's sufficient if I just um, fetch the data on a regular basis. 
Um, if you want to replicate some data, of course, you can also do this. Data synchronization is also possible, also very difficult sometimes, but I will come to that shortly. And if you want to do some reporting, yeah, I, I have some reporting and I want to fetch the data of the last week, um, which is still in Comolosity. Then I fetch the device data of last week and then, then can create in a third party system some reports of the data on request. Yeah, so this is a manual request then. Um, the cons of this is that um, if you're talking about data synchronization uh, and pull data out of Comolosity, um, and you want to work with this data um, on a regular basis, especially, then it's very complex that you do not store some duplicates and that you calculate some data. Yeah? For, to, to give you an example, um, I want to synchronize um, the devices every minute um, or the events data. Um, and every minute my job is running. And in the meantime, 100 new events coming to to the Comolosity platform. So after one minute, the, the client will run again, will try to fetch the data. If my query is not very precise, I have some overlapping windows. Yeah? So I have in the first minute, I have might have the events which I already have in the second window. In, in Comolosity, it's even more complex because sometimes in Comolosity, we have a timestamp, which is in the past or even in the future sometimes, um, but it has been created during that time. Yeah? And this is very complicated sometimes to calculate the delta which needs to be fetched and to avoid duplicates um, in, in your third party system. So this is the concept. So the, the logic to implement that is might be very complex. If you think this is not important, I will just throw it away. And if I have duplicate, I don't, I don't care, okay then it's fine, but most likely it's very um, complicated to implement that. Um, and the second one, um, if you do not um, op optimize your queries in a very efficient way, that it has two impacts. One impact is the, the pull might take very long. So if you're running one minute, um, it could even be that the query takes more than one minute um, and um, you get on that day data and time. So you definitely should invest some time to, uh, to optimize your queries in a very efficient way. Um, and also, of course, then that you do not, that you have a very good query that is not overlapping some, somehow correlating with the first one here. For the pros about this data pool integration, it's also very easy to implement because we have a very good, I would say it's very good REST API documentation. Um, so you can easily implement. We have even pre-built clients um, which you can use. Um, so you just use the client, um, define what kind of data you want to fetch, and here you go. There you have your data. So it's very easy and very fast to implement. Um, it's also very resource efficient from a commonality perspective because um, we just querying data from the database yeah that's that's it if you have an inefficient query of course it's not so resource efficient but we are not holding queues like the push integration and queuing data all the time so we're just getting a request we building the query collecting the data sending the data back and done from the commonality perspective and even on the client side um, if the client is down for some minutes, I don't care if it's running once per day. Yeah? So it's not so important to make sure it's high available. So this is um, the, the broad side of the data pool integration. Now let's talk about the fifth data integration option, which is data offloading. Here again, I switched the focus. Um, the IoT solution is mainly now um, talking to Comolosity. Um, and I just want to work with, with um, some historical data. Um, the Data Hub is an internal tool that helps you to offload data on a regular basis. Um, and it's using third party system or third party clouds um, data lakes to store the data there, um, which then can be accessed with this Data Hub again to build reports or to integrate it to your solution. And that's the reason why I have this error here. Of course, you can also integrate um, the data directly from your data lake if you want to do so, but the data, have, data hub has everything what you need um, to offload the data and also to access the data directly from the Comolosity platform. 
Yeah, so you can offload the data there and you can also exit it um, easily with an SQL interface, with microservices using SQL, and then uh, providing it uh, as a basis for your IoT solution. Um, Main use cases you can implement with that is mainly, as I said, um, offloading existing data. Talking again about data in your Comolosity platform, which I assume again is mainly device data. It's not about like um, integrating now context data, but mainly um, offloading um, existing data. For um, that, we can. Um, we can do some data exploration. So we have the historical long-term device data, which we want to offload to a data lake. And on top of that, we can um, do some exploration. We can build some machine learning models, or we can um, build some trend analysis about this historical data. Um, this is why I separated in the beginning the real-time data and the long-term data, because here we are talking mainly about the long-term data, which should be offloaded and we can work with that. And it's not so good to hold it all the time in Comolosity because it's increasing the operational cost and also might have an impact on the performance if you had a lot of data, which is historical in the operational database, of course. So the main use case here again is offload long-term device data. This is the fifth data of uh, fifth integration option I want to show you. Um, the cons of this is um, that it uh, requires some additional license costs. Um, if, if you want to buy Comolosity, um, then the data hub is, uh, is nothing out of the box. You know, so if you want to use the data hubs, there are some additional license fees uh, to using that. This is one thing. Another thing is, of course, you need to provide a data lake um, where you want to store the data. And also the reporting tool is not part of the data hub. Uh, so you need some, if you want to do some BI reporting, you need to have some licenses of, or the free licenses um, or reporting to available to access the data. The cons of that is um, that you have normalized data and parquet files uh, in your data lake. So this is what the data hub is doing out of the box in the previous options. Um, you're totally free about this, but also can store data like it is. Here we have some standard with parquet files. Um, also, it uh, follows a zero code approach. So the data offloading um, can be done um, without writing any line of code. Um, to access the data, again, of course, you might need some tooling or you need to write some code to access this data and integrate it to your solution, but the whole offloading um, follows the zero code approach. Um, also, it's very if, if reporting is very important for your IoT solution, it's the main part of your IoT solution, it's um, easy, very easy with the SQL interface, which is providing by the data hub to um, access this data for reporting. So again, if reporting is important, uh, if you want to have a lot of data and you want to offload it, then maybe offload data offloading integration is your option you want to use. Now let's talk about the sixth um, option. And I called this one the service integration option. Again, I assume that the IoT solution is mainly running on Comolosity IoT, on top of Comolosity IoT, integrating the API and using the device data and um, using additional data of a third party system. But here, and this one I try to visualize with different kind of errors, um, we are not replicating data. Um, we are not um, storing data here. And this was the first op option, if you can remember, that we just replicate the data, put it in Comolosity, and we have it here. Um, here we use microservices, and the microservices will on the fly fetch data um, from a third party system with REST API or any other protocol like AMQP or whatever um, to fetch the data which is required. And then, of course, you can store them in a cache. You can store them in the, in, in the database if you want to in Comolosity, but mainly um, the idea is that if you have a solution and you want to process some data and you want to work with the material that um, you click on a button, that it will call the microservices and will show you a list of um, machines, for example. And if you now want to filter the list of machines, then it will go through the microservices, will call the REST API, filter the machines, and give you just the filter list of machines back. Um, 
something like that. Um, again, you can use not only REST API, but you can also implement message bus protocol or anything else. Um, the solutions you can implement with that are, are, I call them mainly solution enhancements. So if you want to implement uh, an IoT solution uh, and um, you want to integrate some additional data, for example, in the other data, env environmental data, um, they mostly provide cloud services where you can fetch that weather data or where you can fetch some geodata. Um, and you don't want to persist that in your database. Um, you, you just open the UI and then you fetch the data and you visualize the data in the UI. And you don't want to do this like going here directly to the system. You do this going through Comolosity using a microservices and then fetching the additional data which is needed. The cons of this is, um, Sometimes it has a very high implementation effort. This, of course, depends on um, the API, which is here specified, and the protocol here specified how to fetch the data. This is not always true. But um, if you have a very com complex protocol which needs to be implemented um, to fetch data, to map the data, then it might be um, hard to implement. Also, what I meant with high implementation effort is that you, for of course, you need the microservices for all the APIs. Of course, you can implement them together in one microservice. You can separate the microservice, but it needs to be implemented in a microservice, and a microservice needs to be maintained. Um, the other cons part of this service integration option is, um, I think you already um, got it. Um, if there's something wrong, if there's something not available here in the third party system, this has a direct impact on the IoT solution. Now, uh, in the first option, if I replicated the data, I still have the data here. So I can still, for example, query the materials or query the wind parks. Um, if I rely on third party system, um, and here in the connection is something wrong, or even in the third party system, something is wrong, um, the IT solution might be directly impacted by that. Um, that um, the data cannot be visualized correctly um, or some errors are directly shown in the IoT solution. So this might be um, only valid if you think this is not so critical, so the data is not critical for me. Um, if, if I have some SLAs are uh, um, um, agreed with my service contractor here providing my services, then it's not very probable that you will have some downtime. But of course, if so, then it will have an impact on your IT solution. The pros of this solution is um, you don't have much additional resource costs besides the microservices which needs to be hosted in Comolosity, of course. But here, um, these services are, um, you have them right away or you um, get them from a service contractor. Um, uh, it's also very efficient from from an implementation uh, way. Um, uh, the effort is high, um, but to maintain it, it might not so um, high because the API here might be very stable. Of course, this also depends if you have a very, um, I would say, uh, not so stable API, then the maintenance costs and maintenance efforts is pretty high because you, every time you need to attend, um, 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 change your microservices to the change of the REST API, if the APIs are pretty stable, and in most cases, this is the case, um, the maintenance efforts and maintenance cost is pretty low because uh, it is run, running stable and you only implement um, new stuff when you do some new releases of your IoT solution and want to implement some new features. Um, also, in this option, as I said, the main option is um, you do not do uh, you, you don't do some data redundancy. So if some materials or data is changed here in the system, you don't need to synchronize them here to Comolosity. This is the benefit of uh, option one. Um, so it's changed here, and you have them directly available in your IoT solution. So this was the sixth option. And now um, the seventh option, I call this one the system integration option. Um, the main, the main um, difference to the, to the service integration is that I'm not talking about just integrating one service or a few service, 
but I have to integrate a lot of service, which I called a system, yeah, that I have an ERP system, um, an incident management system, a CIM system, or some other complex systems, and all of them need to be integrated um, to your solution. Of course, you can use the SIX approach with the service integration. You need to develop all the microservices and integrate all the services of all the systems. Um, but that's a better way how to do this. And um, the better way, which might be an option for you, is using a layer in between. And the layer in between here in this case is um, um, an ESB, which is provided by Software G. It's a web methods IO um, um, software, uh, which is specialized in that direction for system integration. Yeah. So if you know um, I want to integrate device data and have to integrate a lot of other system data, um, and you don't want to invest a lot of time implementing that manually and maintaining that manually all the time, then web methods IO is definitely an option here. What is the main difference again? Um, Comolosity IoT has the device data, we have the REST API, and we have some uh, notification service listed to post it here as a web socket. And web methods IO has some connectors and adapters to communicate, of course, this Comolosity and a pull. On, on a push mechanism. So we can actually implement other data entry options also with web methods IO. Um, this is the one side. And the other side is it is, has a lot of adapters and connectors to um, additional cloud systems like Salesforce, like SAP, like name it. Yeah? So a lot of uh, integrated uh, available um, service now is another one. Um, systems you you might need to integrate and you don't want to implement your own it's already there you just need to um, graphically build your own workflow do the mapping of the data um, publish the workflow and that's it and then you have the data there um, and as i said the, the use case list is very long because it's very powerful you can of course implement almost all the other integration options you can also implement with web methods io um, the cons of this is, and you think you assumed it already, um, um, that uh, you, you have additional license costs again because that message I was not part of Comolosity IT. So it's another product which needs to be licensed, but there's also a free version. So if you want to start with a free version, um, you can do that. Um, if you're running more and more workflows uh, and more and more ad adapters, you might need a acquire license. Um, the high maintenance cost I, uh, is mainly not that web methods need to be maintained. Uh, web methods I owe as a cloud system, so you don't need to maintain that. The high maintenance cost I mean here is mainly um, if you had a lot of workflows um, and you have um, designed them and published them and using them productively, you need to maintain the workflows, of course. This is yours. Um, and this is what I meant with high maintenance cost. Or I would better call it high maintenance effort. Um, so if the workflow is changing and you need to additional data or some data is changing in some system, you need to maintain your workflows. And that's what I meant with a maintenance effort. Um, on the pro side, um, you don't need to write any single line of code. Uh, it's following a fully graphical approach, zero code approach. You have a lot of adapters, you have the data. Of course, you need to have some understanding about um, a data uh, and data formats and how to map the data and some basic ruling on transforming data, of course. Um, but here you can actually do this all in a graphical way. And this is also very flexible, of course. Yeah, you can, um, in the workflow, you can fetch the data, you can be informed when an alarm is raised in Comolosity. Um, you can push the data to a data lake, you can um, get the data from any ERP system. So. It doesn't matter anymore. You are very flexible in the implementation. Um, what you want to implement this with the combination from Comolosity and Web Methods IO. So it's the most powerful, but also maybe the most expensive uh, way how to implement the data integration with Comolosity IoT. And now to the to the summary, what I want to um, tell you today, and we already. Um, have 10 minutes left, so this is perfectly in time. What should be your key takeaways? Besides the IoT data, the device data, we need some additional data. 
um, and only the context data is, is very often um, the one which unleashes the full power of an IoT solution. There are multiple types of data residing in different kind of system which needs to be integrated sometimes. And it depends on the system how the data can be integrated. Homolocity has a lot of options. Um, I showed you today seven. I assume there might be more, but um, I showed you today seven, which try to cover all different kinds of options, how you can integrate such, such systems and data to your Comolocity solution. Um, but also it's very important for me, this is not like um, I just picked this one because on the pros and cons set, this looks like the best, like web methods, for example, the seventh option. Um, as a key takeaway for you should be, there is no one-stop solution. It really depends on your use case and your implementation or your solution you want to implement with it. Um, as I said, if you are in an early phase on your project and you want to implement um, just some basic data um, out of a small database or service, then maybe the first option or the second option with data contextualization might be the best one from you from an effort perspective and you just replicate the data. Later on, if you're talking about thousands of materials, you might not want to replicate the data, but you use some service integration or you do it vice versa, push the device data to your to your material data. So you was, use one of the other options. Yeah? So it really depends on your use case, your requirement and your the requirements of your IoT solutions you want to implement. Um, from my experiments, and this is the last point, um, very often data replication is not a very good idea, especially if you're coming to, um, as I said, more uh, high data volume um, implementation um, because they have a very high effort to synchronize the data and maintain the data. Then one of the other options, for example, the service integrations um, is, is better for your approach so that you just have that in mind. But, and this is also what I wanted to um, tell you at the beginning, my motivation was that in the beginning of the project, um, most likely, if you're not so experienced with Comolocity and the architecture, you just have maybe one option which first come to your mind. And with this session, I want to give you some, some options, additional options you, you might not have on your table um, and now are aware of that there are some other options and you pick one of a different one. This is what I wanted to achieve for today. And now to Q&A. Uh, let me open the microphones. If you have any questions, uh, Harald is already raising his hand. Feel free to talk. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, so one typical integration option that I have seen is that during device onboarding, you have to create um, not just the device itself, but also the hierarchies where it is located, like the groups and cumulosity, based on information from external systems. Yeah. Um, which of the options that you um, presented do you think fits best for such a use case? For such a use case, if you want to group the devices, you need the information also in Comolocity. So you cannot use the sixth, uh, seventh option that you get fetch the data on the fly. So you need to somehow persist the data in groups. Yeah. So you, you're calling maybe a third party system, um, um, getting the data that um, um, the machine is created here, and then you call creating the groups automatically, or I don't know the service is doing them and then assigning the device to the hierarchy which is residing on a different system. So the, basically this would be the, the first option data con or second option data contextualization in that area. Okay, thank you, that makes sense. And it's a very valid case, yeah. Not much information you store in the database, it's just the information uh, grouping the hierarchy um, and that's it, but um, if it's just the name of groups, then it's okay. If, if it's more information, like a whole product list um, uh, or some all the data about the machine, then it might be a different story. Then you might use the 
second option to just create the groups or the assets. And then you might need to, or you can link um, with the seventh um, or with the sixth integration, link the data from your machine with an ID to a third party system and fetch additional data on the fly. For example, this could be an option. Or you can also, of course, store all the data in Comolosity if you want. Okay, a follow up question. Um, how would you do synchronization? So, I mean, in most cases, I would assume um, synchronization means that information changes in the external system and you might have to change the group structure in Cumulosity. But I could also see use cases where you have uh, two way synchronization, so where yeah, changes might complex. appear in any system. I try to highlight it that I want to avoid data synchronization if, if somehow um, if, so, if somehow possible. Um, uh, if you do data synchronization in one way, it might be also really pretty complex um, to to check if if is, if something is deleted. You also need to check if I can delete it in Comulosity or if it should be stay there. Um, if the two way um, synchronization, it's even more complex because you need to um, if, if it's synchronized in two systems, it's kind of a mess. And I, I really should avoid that if it's somehow possible and choose one of the other options. For example, again, the sixth one where I don't need to chain, uh, uh, implement some data synchronization, um, but just retrieve the data, which is the, the data, the, 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 the source of truth, where all my maintained data relies on fetch the data and work with the, with the current state of data in my solution. So I don't have to replicate and synchronizing between the system. So again, if this could be avoided, I would avoid it. If it could not be avoided, there is no true answer or a good answer to, to implement that. It's always a high effort to do that. Again, okay. all the options you choose, it's a high effort. Even with web methods I old is a high effort to do that. It's, uh, it's not so easy. So avoid it even if you can't avoid it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, Stefan. Um, I have a question. This is Mauro. In the scenario number seven, but um, for on-premise, which would be your recommendation or best practice? This Just, one? Yes, exactly. But when Cumulosity is maybe Cumulosity IoT Edge mm. and destinations are hybrid, partially on-premise, partially in, in cloud, what, which would be your recommendation into, for mm, enabling this type of integration? Yeah, as you might know, we, we, um, if you have Comulosity Edge, which is not running an internet, which is an, a separated network, um, then of course you cannot use the web methods IO, which is also a cloud system and mainly is focused on, on cloud integration. It does not make sense. Um, for that, we have um, the web method stack, not web methods IO, but the web method stack, um, which can also be installed on-prem. Um, and also has some connectors to Comulosity um, to con connect on edge with Comulosity um, and also some on-prem connectors, um, also SAP and all this kind of stuff, but it's a different kind of product. This is a, mainly a cloud product. The web methods product we have, it's uh, um, on-prem product mainly. So you can just replace this um, this is Comulosity Edge, this is Web Methods, and we are not talking about cloud system, but mainly internal systems or internal SAP systems, for example, or internal material maintenance system, MES systems. Um, for example, this then can be integrated with Web Methods, not Web Methods IO. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Last chance for his uh, BPM. I would like to know, I mean, uh, there is a zero code approach, right? So uh, if I understand it right, it can be a no code approach. So in that sense, uh, do we have uh, low code possibilities somewhere over here uh, in, in type seven and type six type of integrations? 
yeah, this is this is uh, almost a zero code approach. Yeah, no code approach. Yeah, yeah. So my question is all about low code possibilities. Uh, low suppose, code. Uh, yeah. If there are any customizations uh, uh, on top of this integration, then uh, you, it can you, be supported. Yeah. Um, uh, the web methods I O can always be extended. Yeah. Uh, so if you need to integrate some other things. Um, you can, of course, extend that methods I over some additional connectors and adapters. So you need to write them, then I would call it it's low code. Um, um, of course, you can also combine this one that you say, okay, for the system integration, I need, I, I use the workflows here. Um, uh, and I, uh, I, I write some scripts to integrate some other systems. So mix them uh, up a little bit. Um, so this might be a thing you could, but 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 what you actually mean with low code, like having small editor or something or scripts or what's the background of your question? Yeah, so uh, in type six uh, kind of integration, if it is a REST API, uh, yeah, integrating with other app, let's say, uh, if there is a possibility. Yeah, you can do that. You see, here's a REST connector. This one can be done also mm. here with web methods IO. Yeah, if there are any transformations or you know representing in in, in the exactly, uh, but quick quick up UI. Uh, but this so this transformation kind of this transformation you can do. Yeah, so this transformation it's it's kind of a low code approach. Uh, you have an editor, you have the source, you have some target, and in between you have some expressions and low code approach to map the data and transform the data to to the needs you have. I would call uh, this. Low code you know, or zero code. Because uh, workflows, when you say uh, over and above workflows, it's uh, integration of different systems, and there is a high chance that you know uh, these engineers are well uh, uh, immersed into the integration topics, but not the uh, uh, true coders or designers. So this this kind of low code uh, tooling will help them uh, on integration topics, uh, mm. but still they will be able to. Do customizations on top of it, so that's the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And th this is possible. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you again for attending the session. Uh, if you have some feedback, if you have additional questions after the session, feel free to approach me. Again, I said it in the beginning. At the beginning, I will um, upload and provide the slides later on. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day.